I was playing around with this cable tester recently, and this is one just purely for testing cables locally. So you plug one end into one side, one end into the other, and it's not terribly active electronically. Basically speaking, when you uh, turn the knob, it puts a, via a resistor and LED, it puts current out through pin one, uh, and then monitor it coming back through pin one to light the LED here. And as you turn it around, it switches between pin two, pin three, and all these sockets and plugs are basically all got their pins common, all the pin ones come together, pins two come together. It's a very simple unit. It also has a continuity tester, which buzzes. Oh, let me, let me uh, demonstrate that by shorting it out. Loud beep. Uh, lights an LED and passes about 30 milliamps through the load, so I'm guessing that is just switching the, the sounder. And the other thing this has got is a battery check. I probably will open this unit at some point so we can take a look inside it. But the weakness here is that, well, A, I don't use some of these connectors at work because uh, it's kind of designed for the audiovisual industry in general. And in the lighting side, it just tends to be three and five pin XLR, the most common connectors. I'll put that down out of the way. And uh, it doesn't let you test uh, remotely. It doesn't let you test, plug the unit in one end and go to the other end and then uh, check that you know, you're getting the signals through. And it also, because it only tests one lead at a time, it would make it a bit awkward to actually test for a bad connection, you know, jiggling the leads, because you'd have to do that in each and every position. So I was thinking, let's see if we can design something different. And really these days, the best way to design something like this is to use a microcontroller. So I did, I used a PIC 12F635 and decided the power source is going to be a common USB power supply. And this is where, because this circuit draws very little current, this is where chunky power supplies like for instance, this one, uh, aren't so great because they've got that sort of sense function that if the current goes too low, they'll turn themselves off and that is definitely a place that uh, these simpler power packs win. So the circuitry, uh, let's me bring in a notepad. You do get remote testers for DMX cables that just rely on the DMX signal because the DMX signal typically has uh, three pins, plus data, minus data, and the sort of general ground reference for the data lines. And a very common way of testing this. Now, the way this works, uh, Typically, the voltage in these uh, varies from about 6 volts downwards. Uh, the upper voltage level is supposedly 6 volts, I think. And if you've got, say, a logic 1 going out, uh, this will be positive and this will be negative. I think that that's polarity. And a, a logic 0, this will be negative and this will be positive. And this, it's based on the RS485 standard. It means because you're swapping polarity, uh, it results in two things. If there's a net electrical field at these cables, if, if it's a modest run and they're picking up a common sort of electrical field common both cores, it'll be cancelled out. It's looking for the difference between those two, the or polarity between these two connections. And also, because it can push and pull at quite high current, it means that it can actually drive a very long run of cable. So a common tester for this, very simplest tester, is simply between the plus and minus data, uh, you connect a resistor, and then uh, either two individual LEDs or one common bicolor LED with them in sort of inverse parallel. And uh, what happens there is that as the data is transmitted through, if it's a red and green LED, you'll get a sort of yellowish colour that will bias in colour depending on the ratio of the data, the ones and the zeros. But that doesn't tell you about the validity of this. And if the ground connection gets broken, uh, it can actually, because these, you, it can still work, but it can make it susceptible to rogue faults and intermittent operation. So another technique of doing the test is to get the three connections, plus, minus and ground, and uh, have a resistor from each of the plus and minus data lines. Keep in mind these are alternating between actual plus and minus. It's not just, they're not just at that fixed level. And have an LED in each of those going down to the ground line. And that will also, they'll alternate backwards and forwards, but it'll also give you an indication if any of these has been broken. But I would like one that lets me test with absolutely no uh, you know, an infallible one that tests with no data there. So here's what I came up with. I came up with the idea that I could use a PIC microcontroller. Let's draw the actual PIC. And I used a PIC 12, 12F, 
635. I'm saying 635. I think it's a 635. I chose such small print in these. Yeah, I did choose a PIC 12 F635. And the reason I chose the PIC 12 F635 is because I have over a thousand of them. So that seemed like a good idea. Uh, I could have used a PIC 12 F629, but the PIC 12 F635 has a nice feature. You can actually change the clock frequency internally. So there's pin one at the notch end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, pin one is positive, and the design, this whole thing is designed, the whole circuit is designed just to fit into a standard XLR connector. I was hoping to make one of these up complete, but I only have the male version. So this is the plug that would uh, plug into the end of the circuit and show the test. What I tend to do, I, I designed it so all the circuits can fit inside a plug at both ends, including the transmitter. And what I've done in the past, uh, to there's not an awful lot of room in here. You could fit it in here, but I like to uh, screw the top on, but actually cut it off. So you end up with a sort of fairly deep barrel that you can put the connections in and then you can put your circuitry and then fill it with resin up to the top with the LEDs just protruding slightly. Likewise with the circuitry for the transmitter that could be done uh, either with or without the resin. I'm thinking resin's a good idea but it means that if the chip ever gets damaged by an, an external sort of signal uh, something well, I just like to allow for everything, then it makes it just that little bit harder to change. You probably just change the whole connector at that point. The chip uh, versus the connector, the cost of the connector is astronomical compared to the chip. You can get PIC 12F635s or any flavour of PIC on eBay. I'm not sure if they're real or they're clones. Probably work. Uh, they start at about dollar, euro, pound, whatever you work in. And you can get 10 for five pounds, five euros, five dollars. You know, they're cheap. They're very cheap indeed. And I recommend programming the PIC kit 2 or 3, one of sta Microchip's standard controllers. But anyway, I wrote a bit of software for this that basically, uh, so that's the plus and minus. Uh, I put a decoupling capacitor across, 100 nanofarad, 100 nanofarad, and I connected a standard USB lead to it. Now note that the USB leads... This one has a pink and white core, so did that one. The pink in this one is positive and the white is negative. That seems logical, but except in that one, the pink was negative and the white was positive. So always check polarity first. But uh, a standard lead like this is just perfect for this application. Uh, you can then use it to power it off the little uh, power bank. So what I did here, <coughs> uh, I took the, the, the first three outputs. I've made this actually... I only really need three channels, but I've allowed it to operate five. So I've written the software for five and put, I'm going to put two versions of the software up, both the assembly code and the hex code, so you can download them if you wish. And uh, in the case of the, uh, this one, uh, I've configured it. So this is uh, test channel one, two, three, four, and five. These are not the pin numbers. These are just the test channel numbers. And this uh, connection here is the memory clear button so that I just tend to tie that to positive not necessarily recommended practice but I just it's just the easiest way to do it without I think a microchip tend to recommend a 10k resistor or they used to uh, I don't know if that's so critical I just usually connect it straight to uh, the positive anyway uh, so the output goes through resistors and the point of the resistors is really at that side is to limit the current through the LEDs but also to prevent any damage to the microcontroller if it was put on, you know, an, an active line in some way and some there was some small voltage on it. It's to limit the current. So I chose, and it was just a rough value, 220 ohms because I don't want to limit the current too much because I want the LEDs to be bright. At the other end of the connector, at the other end of the cable, should I say, so there's the cable. Uh, pin one, two, three, pin one, two, three. At the other end, I've got resistors again. I'm putting resistors at both ends because you just never know if this was plugged in, if the receiver plug was plugged into an active DMX line, it would want to push current through the LEDs. You're better limiting it. And basically speaking, the, after the resistors, it splits two ways. Uh, there's the LED on each leg and a reverse 
diode across that reverse parallel diode. So we get the LEDs, reverse diode, LED. I'm wishing I'd made more space now, but not to worry. I've started, so I'll finish. And they're actually all common together. And uh, I'm just trying to draw. I've left so little space. I'm just going to draw them in anyway. What this means is that because the PIC microcontroller, if you take, if I take pin high, uh, pin one high, and the other two pins low, that will actually go positive, and they'll both be negative. So the current will flow through this resistor, along the wire, through this resistor, through that LED, uh, and then it will find its way back to the negative via these diodes, the inverse parallel diodes, the LEDs, through the resistors and back again. That's exactly what's happening here. And that's pretty much it. Whichever one of these is powered and which is, is positive versus others that are negative, that's the LED that will light. And here's how I implemented it. Here's a little test circuit with the diodes here. Let's just nudge up on this a little bit. So the microcontroller, the three resistors and the output, the wires, this, this emulates the wire so I can short it out and have horrible incidents with it. Uh, and there's the three resistors, the LEDs with the reverse parallel diodes and then all commoned at one side. And what happens is you can see that it pauses on uh, number one and then it counts two and three. And I've changed the software since. And if you have a broken connection, you'll just get one of the LEDs won't light. If there's a short circuit somewhere, you'll get just one light lighting. The others glow very dimly, but uh, they just you, it'll be obvious that there's a short between these two cables. And then I thought, you know what would be really useful here? Because that's got the same problem the other one, that, you know, if you're wiggling it about to see if there's a bad connection, it would be really nice if they were all lit at once, you could see it all at once. So I changed the software. Let's unplug that. Grab the other chip that I programmed, pop it in. Plug it in. And now it goes one, two, three, and they all stay on. It's actually scanning through them very fast. Is it showing as a slight flicker? Yes, it is. I'm not getting that flicker just because it is extremely fast, but the camera's picking it up. And now it does as before, but uh, ultimately, if you short the wires out, you'll again see that effect. And again, if a wire's pulled out, you'll see that just that LED will go out to indicate the wire's broken. And that would show you instantly. Uh, that if there was a you know an intermittent connection as you wiggled the connector. Now, another thing I thought about this you could do, you could, instead of having three separate LEDs, you could use a common cathode RGB LED. I've not tried that, mainly because I don't have a common cathode RGB LED. But you get the four pin ones with the common cathode, the red, green, blue, and but you could actually use those uh, with the diodes going from the common cathode. Uh, all going to the other, to the LED lead pins and these resistors. And that means that it would go red, green, blue, and then it would go white. Uh, and if you wiggled the connection as a bad connection, it would just change colour to indicate that, you know, everything was not normal. So the machine code, the machine code itself, and I wrote it in uh, pick assembly code. It's just the best way to do it for such a small application where literally it's just a capacitor, the chip, and three resistors in the plug. No need for a circuit board, just... Uh, put it straight, uh, you know, just solder straight onto the chip and stuff it into the connector. So the software is very simple. Literally, this part of the software is just setting the chip up. And the main software starts here and goes uh, just down here. It's less than a page of software. And it's very simple. Uh, I won't go into this in too much detail. You can look at it yourself. I've documented it heavily so you can see exactly what was actually I was uh, thinking at the time when I was writing it. But basically speaking, I've set the internal oscillator for the chip, because I can, to about 31 kilohertz, which is the lowest speed, lowest current. It means that the time loop, timing loops can be very simple. And all it does, at the start of the program, um, it uh, turns, first of all, it turns all the LEDs off, then it and calls a short delay. That's the stepping delay. Then it turns on channel one, and then calls that slight delay. Channel 2 calls that slight delay, and once it's uh, stepped through them all, either three, uh, one, two, three on the three LED version, or up to five on the five channel version, it's just, you know, I could have just made it all five, but I just thought it was quite uh, quite good uh, with the, it just looks nicer when you've got just three channels, and it is just going one, two, three, and then on. 
it's just a flippant little thing. But then after it's done, after it's stepped through the LEDs one, two, three, and they all the LEDs come on together, what it's actually doing there, it does the, it's basically the same software copied again, and a different timing delay. And it just it goes through that 256 times, basically by counting a file uh, continually until it reaches zero. And it just scans through uh, at very high speed through them all. And after it's done that, it just goes straight back to the start and it does the stepping through them again. All very simple. There are only two uh, adjustable variables here. Speed calibration for the speed at which it steps through. And scan cal, which uh, is the... Um, the speed for the scanning and that ultimately just determines because it's 256 steps times it scans that determines how long it spends in that mode before it switches back over to the stepping and I, I experimented with the different values that I thought this was a good reasonable value for you know if you're testing lots of cables you don't want it to spend too long doing this uh, scanning thing when you just really want to see it step through the channels first initially but um, yeah the stepping, you, you might say, well, it doesn't really need to step if it's scanning, but the stepping shows uh, if you've got two wires swapped. If there are two wires swapped, you, you'll get the, the, the LEDs won't step through in sync. And that's fundamentally it. So I'm going to put the software on my website at bigclive.com in the free download section, and you can play about with this. It is strictly experimental, really. Uh, all the resistor values are kind of experimental. I don't know how it'll work in real life. There's only one way to find out, and that's to try it. Uh, but it's worth playing with, and uh, it'll also let you check out the software and uh, see the way my mind works when I'm writing it. <laughs>